You see, I can't survive on my own. I'm a dork. I'm a dork. I'm a dork. Even now, when I finally get to go home, in the back of my head, I'll know the hospital's still here, wide awake. Bambi, get out while you still can. But what the hell? The most important thing is that I got through my first three days without looking like a complete idiot. I'm the man. I know the idea of choosing friendship over sex seems like the last thing any guy wants to hear. But you know what? This time it actually made sense to me. Besides, I challenge anyone to survive being an intern without having a close group of friends to lean on. So they say that one out of every three patients admitted to this place will die here. But some days the odds are worse than that. I'm so sorry. And on days like that, I guess the best you can hope for is that you took something from it. Hey, you turk. Anything. If he's 120 over 80, I like that guy, so let's keep it that way. We're Anything at all. Even if it's just taking the time to lie in the grass and think about all the things you still have left to do. You asked her for help, didn't you? Look, I don't think you realize how important you are to some people around here. I'll always remember that moment as the first thank you I got from Dr. Cox. <laughs> well, geez, Agnes. Does the field hockey team know that you're missing? It felt good. Although, it did take some stones, to be honest. Stick with the truth and you can't get hurt. It's just always been my philosophy. It's funny how our perceptions can be so off. Out, go, go, sweetie. Thanks. Anytime. Like when you're searching for a place to fit in and you don't even realize you've been there the whole time. A bunch of posters can't turn you into a role model if you've already been one for years. Hell yeah! Hit em! Of course, in my case, I knew exactly where I stood. And it didn't feel that good. I would like to make special mention of one intern here, John Dorian. A smart kid, he's extremely confident, and his enthusiasm and his determination to always be better is something I see in him 24 hours a day. He cares. Probably cares too much. But he's definitely somebody you don't want to lose. Now, if you have any questions, uh, well, I could give a crap. I'm going home. You all get paid way too much for doing nothing anyway. I guess what they say is true. The people you work with really do become your family. Like your brother, and your sister-in-law, or that cousin you have funny feelings for. And the crazy, angry uncle everyone sort of hopes isn't coming this year. I've... Frank. Oh. Oh. <laughs> there was the Nina. Shut up. Sometimes the only way to take a really good look at yourself is through someone else's eyes. You know if you're lucky, you'll like what you see. Impressive. Or you'll learn from it. If you don't like what you see, I guess all you can do is hope that you haven't burned too many bridges. Hey, Carla, how many MEQs of potassium should I give this guy? You know the answer to that. Don't do that. Thanks, Bambi. From that moment on, I knew I'd be Bambi forever. See you tomorrow, Scooter. He's actually very talented. Babies are amazing, especially the way they bring people together. So baby Charlie is the bald one? Yeah. He wouldn't be smiling so much if he knew how ugly his parents were. <laughs> You're a sexy bitch. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>
I really think it's impossible to be unaffected. What up, little dog? <laughs> because a baby can stir something deep down inside you you didn't even know was there. Aww, look at the baby. They can help you find something you thought you'd lost. How did you know she was here? I don't know, I just knew. So I guess Turk was right after all. Miracles do happen. I think you just have to be willing to look for them. I've been thinking a lot lately about taking chances. I want you to run a tox screen and a full blood workup for the guy in 37. You can handle all that, right? Yeah. Good girl. Up on the second floor, holy cow, there's a laundry list of stuff, won't you? And how it's really just about overcoming your fears. Because the truth is, every time you take a big risk in your life, no matter how it ends up, you're always glad you took it. I guess the key to a lot of things is balance. Whether it's balance of power. Dr. Simodius, stop smiling. I hate smiling. Balance in love. Or sometimes, <gasps> just balance. <gasps> For some of us, it seems too far out of reach. Gold teeth and a curse for this town. We're all in my mouth. Only I don't know how. They got out here. Turn me back into... Too difficult to achieve. I was when we met. I was happy and then with no mindset. And if you turn... But the important thing is just to never stop trying. Especially if you like girls named Alex and chicken salad. Bam! It shines off the apple. And that's when you find out that that pretty little girl you married isn't a pretty little girl at all. No, she's a man-eater. And I'm not talking about the oh, whoa, whoa, here she comes kind of man-eater. I'm talking about the kind that uses your dignity as a dish towel to wipe up any shreds of manhood that might be stuck inside the sink. And of course, I may have tormented her from time to time, but honest to God, that's what I thought marriage was all about. So much so that by the end of that relationship, I honestly don't know who I hated more, her or me. I used to sit around and wonder, why our friends weren't trying to destroy each other like we were. And here it turns out the answer is pretty simple. They weren't unhappy. We were. Relationships don't work the way they do on television and in the movies. Will they, won't they, and then they finally do and they're happy forever. Give me a break. Nine out of ten of them end because they weren't right for each other to begin with. and. Half of the ones that get married get divorced anyway, and I'm telling you right now, through all this stuff, I have not become a cynic. I haven't. Yes, I do happen to believe that love is mainly about pushing chocolate-covered candies and, you know, in some cultures, a chicken. You can call me a sucker, I don't care. Because I do believe in it. Bottom line, Couples that are truly right for each other wade through the same crap as everybody else, but the big difference is they don't let it take them down. One of those two people will stand up and fight for that relationship every time if it's right, and they're real lucky. One of them will say something.
things that wouldn't have bothered you a week ago in a friendship become so incredibly important when sex is involved. I just, I think it'd be easier if you weren't friends with your girlfriend. At all. I think everyone has their own way of releasing all the stuff that gets bottled up inside them. I guess it just took a good friend to help me find mine. Dr. Doran, we're ready for the finale. Thank you, Dr. Reed. Okay, guys. One, two, three. It felt really good. Leia. <laughs> I think a lot of us get freaked out when med students come because it feels like being forced to accept new people into your family. It changes everything. Me, I was more struck by how these newbies made me look at myself. Who I used to be. Who I am now. And who I might someday become. But hopefully, not too soon. Player, hold me down. <laughs> Such dorks. Oh my god. Oh my god. The worst thing about being a doctor is that you fall short a lot. The best part is that if you wait around for a few seconds, you'll get a chance to redeem yourself. Hey, number two. Hey, number one. I guess there's good and bad at all, and once you've accepted all sides of yourself, it's a lot easier to sleep at night. Good night, number two. Maybe the mistake we make is thinking our parents will change. And maybe they did a better job than we give them credit for. Maybe there, amid all the crap they dumped on us, are some things worth keeping. Like a passion for something you never knew you had. Recent trial, 283 patients. Or the ability to constantly surround yourself with people who love you. Subsequent death placement only in cases of residual brain injury. In conclusion, when most of your time is spent fighting a constant stream of death and illness, you look for any victory you can get, even if it's just a victory over your own self-doubt. Of course, sometimes your ego leads you into battles you can't possibly win. And sometimes you have to admit that feeling competitive isn't a bad thing. Because if you truly believe you're right, you have to be willing to fight for it. Listen, I know what I'm telling you is the right way to go, and I am not going to take no for an answer. Bottom line, when the stakes are high, you have to go for the win. You know, as long as you don't get caught up in the petty stuff. You'll be by God if we lose to these cutters, don't even bother showing up tomorrow. I don't want to beat them, I want to embarrass them. You know, when you start med school, they warn you that you're going to have to make sacrifices. The can of worms has been opened. But I guess that means different things to different people. Like giving up something you really want now for something you've wanted your whole life. Or spending less time on yourself so you can spend more time with someone you love. At some point, you might even have to give up your own sense of safety and well-being. But after a while, it doesn't feel like you're giving up anything at all. Hey, Doc. You know what? Let's talk super fun. It's about the day I realized that admitting we're not heroic is when we're the most heroic of all. Now unleash the dog of wonder, tearing evil's bonds asunder. Underdog. Underdog. I guess he'll always be a hero to me. I know what I've been told. You gotta know just when to fold. But I can't do this all on my own. No, I know I'm no Superman.